was sent to live in a mysterious house. If you cause me trouble, I'll have you sent away in an instant. You understand? But she discovered something. Something magical. Something secret. Most people are familiar with this story, The Secret Garden. Generation after generation, it continues to resonate with families. Originally published in 1911 by Francis Hodgkin Burnett. And though you may know the novel and even the 1993 film taken straight from the pages of the book, you may not know the Texas connection. My name is Carrie Wilt and my great great grandmother is Frances Hodgson Burnett and she wrote The Secret Garden. And not only did she write The Secret Garden, she also wrote other books that maybe your listeners might, might remember, A Little Lord Fauntleroy, A Little Princess also, um, as well as she wrote over a thousand short stories, over 50 books and 15 plays as well over her 57 year career. Carrie, the co-owner of Grape Juice Restaurant in Kerrville, has been doing her virtual media tours promoting the new 2020 film. A different take on the timeless tale featuring Academy Award winner Colin Firth. There is a new movie um, that is made by the same people who did Paddington and Harry Potter. We are very, very excited. Um, as you know, those, those who have seen or, or read or watched the movies of The Secret Garden know that it is a, it's a message about hope. Um, and uh, change and magic and things that right now uh, we all need to hear a little bit about. Um, and so uh, we, we consider ourselves crazy lucky to be um, a part of this heritage and a part of being able to help um, spread that message going forward as well. It's worth the risk. And the best part about meeting Francis's family the memorabilia. Some of the memorabilia you see on the table here, um, back then um, when you wrote a book, it usually was serialized in magazines first. So this is the um, very first chapter of The Secret Garden um, by my great great grandmother that was published in American Magazine uh, for 15 cents uh, for the magazine back then. And then in 1911, um, it was put into book form. This is a first edition of The Secret Garden. It was put into book form uh, from all the chapters um, there. So actually in August, it, it'll be 109 years since the book version was published. And we get the story behind the inspiration, too. One of the biggest influences and inspirations behind The Secret Garden was a home that she rented. Um, this is the way it looked when she rented it um, for nine seasons between 1898 and 1907. But one of the things that was in this um, place was an abandoned garden. Uh, and it was not only just an abandoned garden, it was a walled garden. Here's Francis. Um, in the garden, looking up over the garden wall that's covered in ivy. She loved this garden, but one of the features in the garden, and you can just imagine her strolling past it, wondering to herself, why would someone wall up a garden? And you can see the writer in her just Im imagining the story. And the magical story continues to grow. The new movie is out tomorrow, August 7th, so I had to ask, what can you tell us without any spoilers? Imagine looking at the secret garden as you know it through the keyhole of the door to the secret garden and almost falling into it like Alice in Wonderland did into this new magical world that even your own imagination when reading the secret garden couldn't have imagined. To think that a story could last that, that long and that many generations, and I think that's what's so endearing about The Secret Garden. You know, anybody from a seven-year-old to a 70-year-old can relate to the messages that the garden brings um, and um, of, of hope and renewal, and um, if you go to work every single day, that you could actually grow something. Um, the, the messages are all amazing in there. 